In our studio, welcome guests Brian Clough and a star from Chelsea, Ian Hutchinson. But first it's action. It comes from Stamford Bridge on admittedly a gloomy and overcast afternoon. The fourth meeting in a matter of weeks between Chelsea and Stoke City. Three in the League Cup that of course finished last Tuesday with that fabulous 6-2 win by Stoke City over their London rivals. It really makes it a more than interesting proposition for today as the teams meet now in the first division of the Football League. Chelsea have Chris Garland back after injury, Steve Kember back after suspension, but they are without David Hay, Bill Garner and Peter Hausman, while Stoke are able to announce an unchanged side. Now Harris for Chelsea. Hudson, Stoke at the moment seem to be uh, so well in control, and here's Mahoney going past Dempsey with a lovely swerve. And Hurst wanting it played on and played on perfectly for Hurst. The shot is to go. Scored one nil. Beautifully contrived by Stoke, who were getting on top. Nicely played into the path of Hurst. Across the goal, Troy wasn't aware that Greenoff was behind him, and Greenoff turns it in one nil. Britain, Kemba. And Garland is onside. And Farmer has to do a full back act. Good decision by the linesman there because Garland was definitely in an onside position when that ball was played. Lock now turning it towards Ian Hutchinson on the far side. Garland is in there too. And Farmer really had to go down. Rather late for that header from Garland. And Tony Wallington on the right there. Behind him, George Easterman. And next to him, of course, Gordon Banks. So it's a free kick to Chelsea, taken quickly by John Hollins, and Droy is right in there. Britain in there again for Chelsea. And this could come, no, it won't come for Hutchinson quite. But it's another corner. Hollins will take the free kick once more. Floated in towards Dempsey with the header. Chelsea at the moment showing that their heart's in the right place. As they win this corner again taken by Hollins, a deeper one. Hutchinson there, running it down, but uh, that was quite an easy collect for John Farmer. But really playing well and giving all he's got, Ian Hutchinson. Really as good as a corner these throws. Long, long throw. And Troy, yes! Well, the big man did it in the end. And how appropriate that it should have come from the man who's playing his heart out, Ian Hutchinson. The long throw by Hutchinson. Catching Stoke City out. Troy got above them all, as you would expect him to. In off the underside of the crossbar, I think. 1-1. One, one. Smith again right up there. Jimmy Green off there as well. Two fair-haired fellas. That's Green off. Smith just a little deeper on the edge of the six-yard area. And there's the corner. Oh, and Holly straight in there by Hesselgrave. Well, that was terrible marking by Chelsea from the corner. Well, that was terrible marking as that corner came in. Hazelgrave had virtually what was a free header. Well, another long throw by Hutchinson for Chelsea. Can Droy do it again? Or will it be Dempsey this time? Cook and Garland are also in there. That long throw comes raking in again. And Dempsey is there! that brings the score back to 2-2. Two -two. Finally flicking into that Stokes City net. Dry. Lights are on. Really is a gloomy afternoon. That looked like a push by Hutchinson.
Robertson, but the referee said no. And it still might come. Cook! Oh, it was Charlie Cook. Maybe it was justice in the end because it was clearly a push by Hutchinson on uh, Smith, and I'm surprised the referee didn't see that. But even so, Charlie Cook should have made more of that chance. Smith again right in there. They've still got to get it over. Can Hudson do it? Hit low. Oh, and Smith is there. That's going to be it. Robertson who puts it in. Jimmy Robertson. And that's 3 2 to Stoke. Hit low across the goal. Smith got a foot to it. It went wide of Phillips. And it's Robertson who finally turned it over the line. So here comes another long throw from Ian Hutchinson. Two goals have come from those long throws so far in this game. And there's another dangerous looking one. Kemba with a shot. Oh, well, they very nearly made it three goals from long throws. Tremendous shot there by Kemba, headed away by a posse of Stoke defenders. Tremendous long throw again. Dry is in there, tipped away by Palmer. Well, his foot was way over the line from that throw. And so maybe Chelsea were a little fortunate there. Cook right in there. Britain too. Played for Kemba. Kemba again, his shorts are ripped. Britain. Crossed in once more. That's too close. Hutchinson jumped and caught it with his head, and it's in the back of the net and 3 3. Chelsea 3, Stoke 3, and Chelsea can hardly believe it, and that's the final whistle. What a finish! And what a man to finish it off, Ian Hutchinson. What a game! Well, what a brilliant finish, and quite understandably, Chelsea were keeping pretty tight-lipped about the possibility of uh, Peter Osgood rejoining them. But I think it's equally true that the Chelsea fans had a real hero on their hands uh, yesterday, Ian Hutchinson, who is one of our welcome studio guests today with Brian Clough. Uh, let's come to you first of all, Ian, because Ron Stewart, your new manager, says that he reckons that was the best game you've played for Chelsea this season. Were you equally pleased with it? Yes, yeah, it went quite well. Uh, we're getting into more forward positions than what we have been doing recently. Uh, we, we've been under a lot of pressure uh, while Dave was there. You know, team spirit was a bit down, and so performances uh, suffered. But you personally, he felt that it was your, your, your game personally was better than it has been. Well, I've, I've sorted out the problems at the club now, and a lot happier. And I think this helps a lot in, in one's play. Brian, you saw the whole of that 90 minutes. Um, you were pretty impressed by this fellow. He typified what I thought was a little bit of Chelsea, extra Chelsea spirit yesterday. They gave everything they got, despite the fact they conceded three goals and lost a point. Their approach to the game was good, and uh, I got a big kick out of the very, very last kick of the game when he stuck the goal in. I thought he earned it. And you could have bought him for £500 a few years ago, you were telling you, me. You're always reminding me on about what, you know, one of my many, many <laughs> clangers in management. <laughs> yes, Ian, Ian lived next door to Derby at Burton, and... Uh, I watched him so many times, I saw him more than I saw my own children. Ian, now let's turn to the good news and the part you played in it. Uh, and this incredible long throw of yours, uh, I mean, is there first of all a secret for the way that you can throw a ball quite as long as you do? No, I just think that some players are, are gifted with this, uh, shall we say, art, and uh, it, it just all stems from that. Why is it, do you think, they always cause uh, defences so much trouble? Well, it's the same as a corner. Um, you, we throw, like, Dempsey and Mickey Droy up and it puts pressure on, on, the, on the goal area. And there's also, like Chris Garland was there yesterday, Ian Bren. There's so many bodies in the box that, you know, makes people... But aren't they with. different than a corner? I mean, a long throw coming, what, from six and a half, seven feet uh, off the ground, whereas a corner comes from the ground. There's a, a different trajectory, surely. Is that... Brian, do you think that's one of the things that causes a problem? 
Uh, the, the main thing that causes problems, as far as I'm concerned, is everybody is stationary from a long throw. And where you throw big men in, they're jumping, obviously, a six foot jumps higher than a five foot six. And they jump up straight, there's not much movement, and there's all sorts of panic. It's, the panic is the operative word. Mm. You've had a frightening career, really, haven't you, with broken legs, a broken arm, a broken nose, a broken collarbone. Was there ever, a t when you see yourself there, for example, today, was there ever a time when you felt that you would never, ever get back into first division football? It's hard to say. Um, it's still a job. You've still got to get fit. Uh, I had a lot of encouragement. This was the, uh, the big aspect of, of, my, of my injuries. And everybody kept, kept me going because you, you get very depressed training by yourself and this sort of thing. But, you know, touch wood, they're going well now. Things on the move for Chelsea, very briefly? Yes, I think so. We've got a tremendous team spirit going now with Ron and Edwin, uh, Eddie. And uh, we're hoping that you know, we'll start climbing up the table. Ian, thank you very much for coming in today. It's nice to have another big-hearted player in the studio. Brian Clough, again, many thanks to you as well.